So we're starting to slowly see it. I think the next move up will take us into the 30s in a sustained way, and, and it could go a lot further. Talking gold and silver here today with Dolly Varden and Sean. Great to have you on our channel. And what a year it's been. I read you drilled 70 holes. I mean, amazing. Yeah, no, it's been a big year, Dolly Varden. We've got 70 holes that we have assays pending. We actually drilled a, a total of 115 this year. So one of our biggest years in the history of Dolly Varden. I also read that you had up to 2,000 grams per ton in terms of silver grade. Just to put that into perspective, your business case, what kind of cutoff rate were you hoping for? What's the minimum with your project economics? I mean, we've got a project in Mexico, for example, where the cutoff rate is 120 gram. Could you put that into perspective for our users, please? You know, I like to talk about averages. You know, we've got parts of the project where you're absolutely right. We've got mines on our site that averaged one kilo per silver. So they're exceptionally high grade areas. But on average, we've got around a 300 gram per ton deposit but if we factor in some of the other metals it actually moves it up to almost 400 grams per ton on a silver equivalent basis and in terms of cutoff because we're talking about underground mining up in in bc we use 150 grams as our cutoff grade and bc that's referring to british columbia which is a region well known for mining in canada and i have a quick uh, follow-up question on the uh, gold because of course your project is a gold silver project and uh, there's some insane grades there as well with uh, intercepts of 20 seven grams per ton. Perhaps you can put that into uh, perspective, what is economic and what isn't. That's a really good point about Dolly Varden because the exposure we're giving our shareholders to is the other metal is gold. A lot of our peers are giving exposure to lead or zinc, but we're giving exposure to the other, which is precious metals. The home state deposit, which we acquired, is an average grade around five or six grams per ton on average, and there's about a million ounces of gold there. We went in and we drilled home stake, and we had some really big drill intercepts. You know, the one big hole that comes to mind was 45 grams per ton of gold over 25 meters. So you're finding, you know, 45 grams, it's over 25 meters, very significant. If we look at some of the producing gold mines in the region, the average grades are in and around 10 grams per ton. But we've got some really famous historic mines in the area like SK Creek, which the average grade was almost 50 grams per ton of gold. So there is pressure precedent for Dolly Varden drilling out a deposit that's extremely high grade considering we've got Bruce Jack, SK and Premier in the area. Amazing and uh, we now heard you've drilled the 70 holes, you've got some great intercepts there, super grades with the gold and with silver. What about your cash burn rate? How are you funded into 2024? That's a really good question. We've been very very lucky. You know since I've come in to Dolly Varden I've raised about 75 million dollars and I've done it with some of the best investors in the mining space. So these are corporates like Hecla, which is a 15% shareholder. We've got Eric Sprott as a significant shareholder around 10%. Institutions own 50%. So when we need money to advance the project, we have strategic money and it's readily available. We spent about $25 million in the field last year. We'll start the year with about $10 million and we'll put out our drill results and then we'll plan our, our next program. Okay, that sounds quite smart because obviously you want to have that good sense and move your share price forward, which would result in less dilution if you give out more shares in order to finance. And also, I mean, market sentiment, we see that the silver price might pick up more next year, which could also have a positive impact. Do you also believe we're going to see 25 or $30 next year in the silver price? You know what? My bias is higher on silver. I'm looking at the state of the silver market right now. We had about a 237 million ounce deficit in 2022. We're forecasted to, to have a similar deficit this year in 2023. The use for silver, like we're, we're in a very tight market for silver. We've got solar taking up more and more silver supply. It's estimated that in 2025, 53% of all silver mined will go to the solar industry. It wouldn't surprise me if we got into a scenario where forget 25, forget 30, we could be in an environment where silver is going after the old high of $50. And as solar is one of the key drivers, uh, this is from uh, energy business, but there's also a study from the World Bank. It all looks quite similar. We are kind of here right now um, and it's just 
a very steep trajectory, which is now even being accelerated as countries look to uh, reduce the dependency in the energy market. So when are silver investors going to acknowledge that this could be an additional key driver? Sometimes there's a bit of a, a lag and a reaction, and that's where the opportunities, the inefficiency of markets come in because we may not be at a point where we are scarcely going out and trying to find that supply for silver for another year. The market has been lulled into this false sense of security. We've gone from a place where we had an abundance of silver to a place where we've got hundreds of millions of ounces in deficit. And the problem with all this is for silver, it's a byproduct. There are not a lot of primary silver mines. And in order to incentivize the exploration, development, construction of new primary silver mines, we're going to need silver north of $30 an ounce and on a sustainable basis. So I think it's been very frustrating for some silver speculators in that they see photovoltaic market, you know, which is tied to solar, go from 10% of the silver market now hovering to almost 50% of the silver market. And they're going, well, wait a minute, with all this increase of demand and the supply not coming on, why haven't we seen the price spike? And what I would say to that is if you go back a few years, we were in an environment where 16, 17, 18, $18 silver was the norm. Now we're in an environment where silver in the mid 20s is the norm. So we're starting to slowly see it. I think the next move up will take us into the 30s in a sustained way and it could go a lot further. Um, you know, the good, the good news for silver speculators is that, you know, with a depreciating dollar, with falling bond yields, with increased safe haven demand, and now with the recent dovish tone from the central banks, coupled with the fact that you've got increased industrial demand and then mine supply not coming on, it is the perfect moment. This could be one of the biggest investment opportunities for precious metals investors, silver investors, commodity investors at large. This is, is setting up to be the perfect storm.